So let's say you're soaring your favorite dune on your hang glider, your paraglider or your powered paraglider for all I care. And you encounter this big gap in the dune, this big hole. How are you gonna cross it? Especially when there is a lot of crosswind. That's what we're gonna talk about in today's episode. Welcome to Flight Coach, my name is Bas van Duin and it is my mission to help you get the most out of life and your flying career through having less stress and more skills. This episode is the second episode about crossing holes in dunes. Specifically about crossing holes in dunes with a crosswind, which makes things a little bit more difficult. If you've not seen the previous episode, I highly recommend that you do that first. I will leave a link right here so we can seamlessly transition to the next part of the story where we left off last time. So there he is, safely on the other side, and he's decided to fly back. We've left him alone for a couple of hours and the wind has suddenly shifted. As you can see, in this case, the wind is pretty cross. Let's call it around 60 degrees. What does that actually mean for crossing this hole? And is there any difference from crossing from one side to the other and vice versa? If the wind is like this and we draw in the arrow, and of course we can divide that into two components. One that is facing the dunes and one that is parallel to the dunes. Perpendicular and parallel. Depicted by these two arrows. Now you may already notice that there's quite a big difference because the, um, because the vector actually pushing you into the hole is smaller in this case. And Coming from over there, you have a tailwind component. So the flight from over there, to our, from our right to our left, would look something like this. And there he goes. Easy peasy. So crossing this gap, thanks to the huge tailwind component, just became super easy. So now then what happens when you start flying in the opposite direction and you wanna make this same transition? This component that previously was a tailwind now suddenly has become a headwind because the wind doesn't care what direction you're flying. It keeps pointing in the same direction. The wind is still at a 60, roughly 60 degree angle uh, with respect to the dune means this component is now working against you greatly reducing your effective glide ratio over the ground as you probably already expected this is going to be a problem for the pilot because he's not going to make it he's trying oh he's trying he is using the change of his heading, so he's flying more into wind, and he's using his speed system, but because the wind has changed, he is unable to make this crossing to the other side. And these are conditions which you may encounter uh, in practice. Crossing from one side, super easy, and not being able to fly all the way back. Now normally, that's just a minor inconvenience. You know, you can, if you land here, you can just maybe even kite to the other side of the dune and fly away again or make a little mushroom, put it over your shoulder and walk uh, a couple uh, of meters and fly again. But keep in mind that there are also situations and those are situations in which I have flown as well, in which here there is no opportunity to land because this is not beach, but the dune is interrupted because here is an inlet in which boats can be sailing. So there's water here and if you may, don't make the transition and you end up in the water that can really uh, make an unexpected twist to your day. But this crosswind can also be your friend and it's once again it's dependent on the conditions. It depends on the shape of the dune, it depends on the strength of the wind, the direction of the wind, the height of the dune, but you may be able if you take a look at the 
at the head of this dune, so to speak, you may be able to notice that the wind is almost head on to this area. Meaning that the lifting zone for this specific small area is, um, is a lot more favorable than the lifting area over here because the wind uh, blows against it at a better angle. This may lead to you finding um, a higher lifting area here, a higher reaching lifting area. Let's see what that would do for you. It would make it possible for you to soar up on this small piece of land to gain extra altitude to try again and make the crossing. Let's see if he does. Yes, he does. Did not expect that to happen. No, but seriously, check for such opportunities. Don't go in a straight line as he did in the previous situation with this wind and be all uh, focused up, all wound up. I need to cross the hole just fly the ideal line, try to find opportunities to increase your chances. And getting higher is a great way to increase your chance. Because look at it from the side, look at what happens when he starts. Let's find a good angle. Look what he gets in extra altitude. When flying on this little bump he may get like twice the altitude and that may provide him with the extra gliding distance horizontally to cross the hole. So if by now your brain is completely overloaded and full, I understand completely. Um, see you next time. See you in the air. But if not, I got a little encore for you. So it's important to know that of course wind is not arrows. This is all just a theoretical approximation of the much more complicated reality outside. Um, but this for me is the only way to transfer information like from my head to yours by using these models which by definition are not uh, comprehensive they're not complete by themselves so for these videos i'm always trying to estimate your attention span and the information that i want to convey and while i was making this video i felt some of you would come up with the question or the idea what happens around the edges of the dune with the wind. Because I drew these nice three arrows here, but what would it actually mean if we zoom in a bit? Let me show you what is happening locally. The wind over here blowing against the dune, going over the dune. The wind over here going straight through the two sections of dune. And for here, it's the same as over here. Well, over here, something like this happens. And it's the same on the other side. Part of the wind particles are traversing over the dune, but some are also going, so to speak, around the dune. Meaning that locally, even though the wind, remember in this specific example, the wind is head on again. Even though the wind is perpendicular to the dune, locally, close to the feet of the dune near an edge, it's very different because the wind is curling around the side of the dune. And this is something you have to be aware of. And this is why um, people that have been blown into these holes sometimes get the sensation of being sucked in. Because if you're flying somewhere here, here, here or here, you're actually being accelerated into the hole. And it doesn't matter what direction you're crossing in. If you're crossing from right to left over here, you'll actually feel yourself speeding up over here. That's the Venturi, um, that's the Venturi induced wind. And it's the same um, when you're reaching the other side. You will feel a sort of headwind component when you reach this part. And that's explained by this 
well, so to speak, micro meteorology. So just be aware of local wind near edges of holes being parallel to the dune, even if the wind is perpendicular. If this episode brought you some new insights, please leave them in the comments down below. I would love to read them and discuss them further with you. If you haven't subscribed already and you like the channel, don't forget to press that subscribe button. Also press the bell icon so you get notified of new episodes. And another very effective way you can help me help others fly with less stress and more skill is if you would share this video with your flying buddies, with people you meet on a takeoff or on a landing location. That would be great. See you next time. See you in the air.